Doctors of Reddit, what patient made you go out of the FCK are you even alive? Lady in her mid 30s was in the clinic for a one week follow up post foot amputation. Diabetes. She was admitted straight from the clinic because her blood glucose was 600 mgdl. Normal is 80-120, and the wound was severely infected. We used super concentrated doses of insulin to bring it back to the 200s. She was on strict diet restrictions and we couldn't figure out how it wouldn't drop any lower than 250. Turns out her kids, teens, had been sneaking giant 64 ounces sodas and candy bars into the hospital. Literally one week after we chopped her foot off because of uncontrolled diabetes. Not exactly a case of how the FCK did you survive that trauma disease but how the FCK do you even function on your own? Double quote. My wife's father died due to diabetes complications. He'd been in and out of the hospital for several years. He went in on a Friday. They amputated toes on Sunday. He was dead on Monday. Nobody was prepared. But nobody was surprised. Either. When we went to his apartment to clean it out. And there was candy everywhere. Under couch cushions. Pillows. In his bed. In all of the cupboards. I have a sweet tooth and I can't imagine wanting this much candy. The man killed himself. I work in trauma and once had a guy fall off a roof he said he remembered hitting the bars on the scaffolding on the way down. We originally thought he'd fractured his femur but nope just a small hematoma. He was in bed next to a man who had broken his ribs and had a small c-spine fracture when he fell forward picking up his keys. I was on home call for ER in a small town. Got a call from the ER nurse one night and she was like Ems brought someone in here and they think she might be dead. I was like. Dot. Well. Is she. She was like I don't know. Double quote. Dot. This was a seasoned RN. By the way. So I was like. Well. Guess we're treating this as a code blue kind of situation. So without any further information. I jump into my car and rush over to the hospital. Once I got there, I realized why the Tridge nurse was so confused. In the trauma bay, lay what appeared to be skeletonized remains under a blanket. The person felt warm to touch. So I opened their eye. And a yellow. Wrinkled. Shrunk and eyeball stared at me and then suddenly moved. Potassium of 1. For those familiar with lab values. The backstory was extreme self neglect depression combined with caregiver neglect. Weighed in at 67 pounds at a height of about 5 feet 5 inches. We actually resuscitated her. Very aggressively. And unbelievably. After about 8 liters of fluid. She started speaking a word or two at a time and recognized her daughter. As a med student on my emergency rotation I had a guy brought in who had fallen off a 7th or 8th floor balcony and landed on his head. Essentially DOA and we couldn't get a blood pressure when he got to the hospital. As a student my job was to basically stand to the side and squeeze the bajillion bags of blood that went into this dude. His cervical spine was essentially dust on the initial CT scan we got. I figured he probably wouldn't have made it but about a month later I am now on my IQ rotation and I see this guy awake and conscious. Pretty crazy. During residency. My IQ patient had to have his chest reopened less than an hour after 6 hours open heart CABG surgery. He needed 12 units of blood. His heart massaged then shocked 4 times. Cardiothoracic surgeon and the IQ operating because no time to go back down to or. Was an illicit drug abuser and alcoholic. Nurses called him the cockroach. I checked in on him for 4 weeks. He was unresponsive every day. On week 2-0 we had to consult and. To take maggots. Out of his nose. I was sure he was a goner after that. Week 3 passed. No change. Week 4. Day 24 I believe. At 6 AM. He opens his eyes. I was shocked. He has a permanent trach and ostomy now. But somehow is alive. My dad is 87. He had prostate. Liver. Bowel. Colon and skin cancer. For the skin cancer he had lots of reconstructive surgeries. His whole tibia region and the back of his hands. Comma every year he has to have at least one skin lesion removed. 
he had a couple of heart attacks and then a sextuple bypass surgery. He also had a big pneumonia. A huge abscess and a small stroke. His doctor wants to see him every 6 months. I think just to be amazed that he's still walking around. Patient here. When I was 2 I was being treated for asthma due to wheezing. Labored breathing. Etc. One night it got exceptionally bad so my mom took me to the ER. They put me face down to do a CT scan. This was 1990, and when they were done. They turned me back over and I was blue. Had stopped breathing. CT revealed a volleyball size mass in my chest. Emergency surgery revealed what was supposed to be my twin. It kept growing inside my rib cage and finally had nowhere to go in my toddler body so it cut off my airway. It had fingernails. Hair. Appendages. Everything but major organs. I made a full recovery. I am a healthy 31 year old now. Zero asthma. Only remnant of that night is a scar that goes from the center of my chest to the center of my back. Update. Definitely didn't expect this to blow up. Damn. Thanks for my first gold. This was a teratoma. So it was never a viable human. Edited the post to show that I am the healthy 31 year old. Lol anybody that quoted Dwight Scroot is my hero. A couple pictures of me before and after brain surgeries were on the front page around this time last year. The mortality rate for acute subdural hematomas is 50-90%. Of those who live, approximately 20-30% regain any brain functioning. Due to the subdural hematoma, the bleeding in my skull was so severe that I also had cranial herniation. My brain tilted 5 millimeters. Causing my brain stem to compress into my spinal cord. That I not only lived. But woke up. And recovered well enough to go back to work get married travel the world return to baseline physically is a straight up medical miracle. I'm still in touch with the neurosurgeon who was on call at the hospital that day. And he says the same thing. My mom's a doctor. I asked her about this when it came up on Reddit. When my mom was in her ER cycle during internship. Man with police officers behind him came in the ER. The man was perfectly fine and walking. So my mom and her colleagues were confused. The officers showed them a picture of a crumpled metal piece. Which was a car. It didn't look like a car at all. Just metal trash. The officers told my mom and her colleagues that they rescued the patient from the car. Which was lit on fire only a few seconds after they rescued him. The patient didn't have a single scar on him was perfectly fine and got his name around the hospital for being immortal double quote currently in residency but this was a patient i saw in medical school this one has more to do with a patient's past medical history instead of anything acute had one patient in one of my internal medicine rotations who was admitted for hip surgery who was one of the nicest sweetest people i've ever met her surgery was pretty routine and there were no complications in her past medical history, she was diagnosed with stage IV endometrial cancer that had spread to her brain. Apparently she had undergone chemo, radiation, primary tumor resection, and surgery to remove the brain met. She remained cancer free since that period. The fact that she had undergone that whole ordeal and appeared to be mostly healthy and was in remission from her cancer really blew my mind. A guy. Now passed away who had incurable lung cancer from Agent Orange exposure during infantry service in Vietnam and his wife had recently died. Cancer. Wife died. Guy was pretty positive glass half full about chemo considering the double whammy. Asked him how he managed to keep it on the positive. He said he was returning to base with just days left on his enlistment. Rookie pilot has a mechanical failure of some sorts in their hui. They are going down and not the controlled kind of landing either. He assumes he is about to die. Says everything got real slow. Real bright and a sense of acceptance and peace washed over him. Rookie pulls one out at the last moment. Lands their bird with no casualties. Patient told me he felt he should have died that day. And every single day since was a complete gift. Maybe being alive has a lot to do with attitude. Obligatory not a doctor. But my dad is and he liked to tell us about the crazy shit he saw. This post made me think of one of those in particular. 
Huge guy. Linebacker build. Came into the trauma ward with a gunshot wound dead center of the chest. He could breathe fine and he had a pulse. So they did a chest x-ray and found that the bullet had spent all its energy getting through this guy's sternum and was just resting on his pericardium. My father's doctor couldn't believe her, he didn't need to amputate his feet and b, he was still alive. Dad had brittle diabetes. His pancreas would kick in and out due to a congenital deformity. At 82. He had significant heart issues. Including angina in large heart and clogged arteries. One day. His feet went black. Not just bluish. Or grey. Black as charcoal, rushed to emergency. We were told they would amputate. But to say our goodbyes. Dad refused surgery. Said he'd rather be dead. At his age. Hours later. His feet were pink. We took him home that morning. Doctor actually apologized for upsetting us. But said he'd never seen anything like it. Airlifted pregnant female with GSW to the head. A ride intubated and non-responsive with the bullet lodged in her right occipital lobe. Self-extubated the next day and left the hospital against medical advice two days after that with only minor visual deficits. Unbelievable. Veterinarian. Dog hit by a train. It severed the dog's leg and the dog carried its own leg home. Owner brought dog and leg to the ER. Edit. Leg could not be reattaches due to significant damage to limb. Dogs do great as tripods though. I'm a psychologist. Not an MD or do. But I work at a psychiatric hospital. Anyway. One of my patients a few weeks ago was a 15 year old boy who was regularly neglected as an infant by his mother who was an addict. When he was around 5 years old. His mom pimped him out to men for sx in return for drugs. When he was 9. His stepfather gave him a skull fracture after beating him with a wrench. When he was 14. The same man shot him with a pistol for talking back. He's in foster care at the moment. And suffers from CPTSD and depression. But. He's the sweetest boy I ever met. I wish him the absolute best in life going forward. He deserves it. I'm not a doctor but I did meet a patient who fell from a 5 story building. Landed on his upper back. Woke up in the hospital the next morning and got up walking around like nothing ever happened. Barley a scratch on him. Think about it every time I'm in a building with at least 5 stories. Just looking down like how in the world did this guy walk away from that like he fell off his bike and took a nap. Actually. I've seen worse injuries from someone falling off a bike lol. Not a doctor. But was the patient. When I was in boot camp I developed an upper respiratory infection during second phase. I didn't want to get dropped back a platoon so I gutted through. Got back and went to sick call where they treated me for a host of things. When they x-rayed my chest. The doctors came out with my films and literally asked how the hell are you still alive? Your lungs are so full of mucus you should be dead. Double quote. Turned into walking pneumonia at some point. I also had athlete's foot that turned into cellulitis and my last wisdom tooth yanked. So the combination of meds they had me on was enough that I don't even remember that week at all. We had one of these at an eye doctor's office of all places. Patient was complaining about how her new glasses weren't working. So the doctor took her in back to check to see if the prescription needed tweaking. The doctor came up with a completely different prescription. Patient was overweight but claimed she was not diabetic. The doctor convinced her to let us take a blood sugar measurement with a staff member's personal glucose meter. All the meter displayed was high. With some arguing. We were able to get her to go to the local hospital right away. I don't remember what her blood sugar level was. But I remember it was the hospital's high score for a while. She should not have been conscious let alone functioning normally. My friend in nursing school was in charge of checking in and out a habitual patient that also was seen by a full nurse and doctor. On checkout she noticed a bandage on the guy. Oh that's for my hole. The guy had an open sore that kept getting bigger and bigger and he had stuffed 3 t-shirt in it. He had been having repeated health problems and they just listened to his lungs. Would give him an antibiotic and treating him. I had a patient who was literally cut in half at the pelvis after a car hit him and pinned him to a telephone pole. 
paramedics carried his legs and separately. He was wide awake and talking to me as we quickly put in a central line and he got all the bleeders ligated by like 5 different surgeons. He declined pain meds repeatedly. What a legend. He was in the or 5 minutes later. Luckily this was at a major academic center with an exceptional trauma surgery team. Apparently the guy lived. Not sure what his quality of life was after. But pretty crazy. ER doctor. Oh my goodness. So many patients. Too many to tell. One good one. I once took care of a guy in the rural south who came to the hospital because people said he was growing salt. And he was so totally covered in what looked like snow. Uremic frost. I said. Since I was fresh out of residency. Guy had been in renal. Kidney. Failure for 3 months and had been vomiting every day which kept his potassium low enough that he didn't die. But it was still 9. 7 and his ECG was a sine wave and he definitely should have been dead. Google uremic frost. It's a good one. I'm not a doctor. But I do know a story that surprised most doctors. I am currently 19 years old. My childhood was quite normal at first. But everything became quite dark when my grandfather got cancer in his testicles. When he started chemotherapies everything was very hard for him and for the whole family. My cousin Cisa and I used to visit him after lessons. A couple of years passed and our grandfather recovered from cancer. But the smile was erased when they told us that he had metastasis so the cancer spread to the part of the rectum. He had to start chemotherapies again. Luckily the cancer was not as serious as the previous one. Although it sounds strange my grandfather survived and cured of the second cancer after a year. There were no longer any forecasts of any other terminal illness. At 17. My grandmother passed away. Which made our grandfather move with my family. But being quite impatient. He would go out from time to time to sunbathe and feed the birds. He went to the park by bus. One had done at night and my grandfather had not come home. He took the bus but the driver was drunk. The bus crashed. Four people died and seven survived. Of which my grandfather was. We did not realize that he had disappeared that night. The next morning we found him in the hospital sitting as if nothing had happened. We all burst into tears as he complained about the decanter while laughing. My mother joked that God had forgotten to take our grandfather to heaven. This year my grandfather got the flu and we went to the doctor. After writing the medical history. The doctor almost dropped his eyes when he saw that he was still alive. Belligerent guy comes in. In a wheelchair. He doesn't want to be here. He's fking fine. The party was good. M's. Fked his evening up. M's brought him in from a bush party. The guy had a chainsaw stuck in his thigh and shin. Literally jammed in his leg. And severe burns after falling into the bonfire on half his body. Guy was hammered. Didn't seem bothered by the fact he was severely burned or had a chainsaw in his leg. He ended up losing the leg below his knee. And got a nasty infection from the burn. But still. If his leg wasn't completely fked. I'm convinced he'd have gotten up and tried to fight people. My sister was the patient. But every doctor who's gone through her whole file has had this reaction. When when was 9 she fell around 35 feet off a bluff and landed head first on bedrock. Shattered every bone in her skull. A very well known neurosurgeon took a look at her when she was brought in. Said sorry there is absolutely nothing I can do for her. I'd say she had a 10% chance of surviving the night. Say your goodbyes now. 3 weeks in a coma. 3 months in an IQ. 6 months as an inpatient. She's still alive today. She has permanent damage of course. But holy cow can kids bodies recover from a lot. I'm a midwife and we have patients who have massive obstetric hemorrhage, mod, which is classed as any blood loss over 2 liters. This can happen for a variety of reasons. We had a patient who unexpectedly started hemorrhaging following an uncomplicated normal vaginal delivery and we just couldn't stop it. As soon as we pumped blood in. It hosed out. The doctors had to perform an emergency hysterectomy and the bleeding stopped. I think it's fair to say we were all shocked not just at the incident itself. But at the fact that this woman lost 8 liters of blood. Also. 
that she spent just one night in intensive care before she was back on the ward. Caring for her newborn. And she was home within a week. Women are bloody awesome. Excuse the pun. For reference, women usually have between 4. 5-5. 2 liters of blood circulating in their body. Hence 8 liters is very scary. I had lost a lot of blood to anemia and went into the doctor for something else. She starts looking into my eyes. My gums. Pinching my cheeks and telling me that I'm several anemic and then said are you always this white and pale? And then I'm like. Yeah I guess. And then she made me take a test. Turns out my blood level hemoglobin was at 6. 5 and dropping because of my heavy menstrual cycle and stomach issues not absorbing iron. I had gone into the doctor because I had really bad heartburn. And turns out that I was really low on blood. It explained all the dizziness. Coldness. Eating ice by the pound. Auditory hallucinations were happening and I started to just not care about anything. Had numbness in my whole body as well. And trouble breathing. I'd been in such a dire state that I started to accept all of these things as normal. When I checked myself into the ER. I told them that my doctor told me to come in. But I think she was overreacting. And I can probably just go home. They quickly tested me. My blood level had dropped a little in a couple of days and I still had heavy menstruation. They quickly admitted me to start my blood transfusion. They said that had I waited I would have likely gone into cardiac arrest or would have just died in my sleep. After the blood transfusion I felt amazing. I could breath and my skin color was back. I had a patient in the emergency room who had been involved in an awful car accident where firefighters and paramedics spent an hour trying to get him out of his car. Reportedly. He attempted to walk to the ambulance and when he arrived he was awake and talking. Confused speech. But still. Then paramedics signaled the back of his head to me. His skull was popped open on the back so much that I could see inside. We paged the brain surgeon immediately and the patient was taken directly to the operation theater. Months later I heard from my colleague that he was still alive and had no damages other than some occasional balance problems. Not a doctor but a registered nurse. Last summer between the months of June to September we had a young male. 19 years old who crashed his motorcycle and was sent flying through a van's windshield. By the time he came onto my unit he had gone through so many operations and I heard he needed to have over a hundred blood transfusions within the first month to keep him alive. He also ended up losing all movement and sensation from the belly button down as well as losing his left arm. His right arm was intact but barely functioning. Neurologically he was with it. Knew his name and that he was at the hospital but I honestly don't think he knew what happened to him. His family members were very nice and I could only imagine how they were feeling. I honestly have no idea how he was still alive. He couldn't sit up straight anymore because he would be in terrible pain 24 stroke 7 but if we laid him flat he couldn't really clear his secretions. I'm surprised he didn't get pneumonia or aspirated or something else. We discharged him to a long term acute care facility and that's the last I heard of him but it's just such a sad story considering he is only 19. I was very early in. This kid hit up a convenience store near the hospital where I was working. Killed two people. One a kid. He had been beat to shit. Shot. And wrecked his car. Thanks to the magic of CCTV and video monitors. It was all recorded. That was his last free day. My job was to get him in and out. We go him up and running. And the real hard part was seeing a 19 year old realizing life as he knew it was over. Not a doctor but my future brother in law was definitely one of those cases. When he was about 5 and my fiance was 10. Their family went to go visit their grandparents who own a significant amount of land. Grandparents gifted my fiance one of those mini four wheelers for kids. This thing did a significant amount of speed, I don't recall how fast my fiancé said it would go, and grandparents obviously made a rule that brother-in-law couldn't ride on it alone and both had to wear helmets at all times. Well. Brother-in-law really wanted to ride it and snuck on when nobody was looking and just took the FCK off. About 30 feet. Before slamming straight into back end of the grandparents suburban. 
From what my fiance has told me, brother-in-law cannot remember any of this accident. It was bad. He cracked his skull. Tons of stitches all over his face. Knocked out some baby teeth. And wore headgear for almost a year because he f up his head. The doctors told my in-laws that it's amazing he survived. And a miracle that he didn't have permanent brain damage. He's a pretty cool kid now at 18. And will be my fiance's best man. My blood sugar was more than 1. 0, 0, 0 when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I was less than a year old. My mom had taken me to the doctor's office 4 times in 3 days but the nurse called her a nervous mother and sent her home. Also diagnosed with Addison's disease a couple years ago. I'd probably had it for months. And had been living on my own in a town where I knew nobody. The day I got home I basically had a conscious blackout. Happened a few more times over the next couple weeks and I lost the ability to sense low blood sugars. When I was finally hospitalized I was in Addisonian crisis. Took them 3 days to bring in an endocrinologist. And he knew what was wrong within minutes. They told me my heart would have stopped within a week due to low sodium high potassium. My grandfather is a medical anomaly. His doctors hate him so much. He cut out a cancer lump with a pocket knife. I was like 9 and held paper towels. Cut his thumb in half. Stumpy. Then the pointer on the adjacent hand, the long way. Looks like a claw. Cut a hole in his middle. I was young and helped clean and bandage. Survived a stroke. Has a brain aneurysm. A hernia. And like 4 teeth. He's a fucking mess. But still kicking. This was many years ago so I can't recall the exact details but basically. We had a lady on ventilation with sepsis and multi-organ failure. Renal failure. Respiratory failure. Metabolic acidosis. Deranged liver enzymes. The whole works. We counseled the family and they agreed to withdraw life support so DNR was issued and we took her off her ventilator. A few days later she's still around. Unconscious. Still in full blown sepsis with multi organ failure. But brainstem functions were there. I remember looking at her charts with my registrar, I think resident in the US? Comma and my registrar going but. How? Double quote. Then one day maybe about a week on. During visiting hours. The patient's son approached us before he left to thank us for looking after his mother. His parting words were. And I kid you not. I don't know if it's relevant. But my mother practiced black magic. Double quote. My registrar made the ward sister contact the hospital chaplaincy team to inquire if they do exorcism. They don't. Not me but it's this thing my dad used to tell my sister and I. My dad served during the Gulf War and said he had to work on a guy whose head got ran over by a tank. What happened was a marine fell asleep against the treads and the tank drove over him. Guess the fact they were in sand and wearing a helmet saved him. But only barely. My dad said the guys was still incredibly messed up. He never went into specifics. I work in an ER in Lebanon where the construction safety regulations are a bit lax. A few years back I remember that construction workers were falling off buildings like dominoes. One guy came in having fallen from a few stories up and got impaled by an iron bar that went through the back of his neck and out of his left eye socket. Guy was alive and talkative when he got to our ER. Rushed down to surgery. Apparently it had missed every vital structure somehow and the guy didn't even lose vision in his eye. 